Welcome back to Giant Monster Games, I'm Adrian, and today we are doing a $40 budget mono black control deck. Let's jump straight in, starting with spells. Now we're running an almost unreasonable amount of removal spells in this deck. Our first card is four copies of Doomblade, followed by four copies of Go for the Throat. Now these cards are our premium, just straight up removal. Obviously we can't get rid of black, or we can't get rid of artifact, depending on which one of these we have in our hand. But they are direct, I don't want that on the field anymore, how about you put it in your graveyard cards for us. Now a key feature of this deck, unlike most other decks where you kind of want to hold on to your removal, we want to use our removal spells as liberal as possible. Literally, anything that gets put on the table, we are going to remove immediately. And we need to keep doing this as much as possible. That's the entire point of this deck, is to staple our opponent to the ground so our big creatures can come in and just stomp over top of them. The next two pieces of removal we have are two copies of Disfigure and one copy of Dismember. Now these are doing a little bit different job than the last two pieces of removal we have because they get rid of indestructible creatures if necessary, which is really why we have them in the deck. Other than that, they're also both technically one drop, so we can play them on turn one to get rid of stuff if we're playing against like an aggro deck where our opponent is aiming to get in two or three damage on turn one. Now we have Get's Verdict, we're running three copies of this, and it is also doing something completely different than all of the removal we saw before. This allows us to deal with creatures that we can't target. Things that have Hexproof, things that have protection from black, we can actually deal with that because all we need to do is target our opponent and they're the ones that are going to be killing that creature off. Basically, Boggle Dex, Infect Dex, and Stomp Dex, which rely on giving their creatures Hexproof to prevent them from dying. Mass removal time, we have two copies of Vile Blight, and this is like mass removal light actually, it's not really mass removal. We're hopefully gonna two for one, or best case three for one a creature on the battlefield. It's also doing a similar thing to what Disfigure and Dismember do, where it's giving a creature minuses, so if it is indestructible, we can still get rid of it. So that covers all the removal spells we have in the main deck, but we have eight more different removal spells in the sideboard, which I'll cover when we get there. But for now, let's move into different forms of control. Starting off with four copies of Duress. Now this is going to allow us to look at our opponent's hand and get rid of a non-creature, non-land spell. We have so many ways of getting rid of creatures, we don't really care to get rid of a creature out of our opponent's hand. We'd rather target something that's going to give us a hard time, such as Path to Exile, any counter spell, or Lightning Bolt. I generally would want to grab Lightning Bolt if I had the chance to get rid of it. But how do we deal with combo decks? Well, the budget way of doing that is running Lost Legacy. We're running two copies of this in the main deck, and it allows us to name any non-land, non-artifact card, and remove it from our opponent's deck, graveyard, and hand. So again, we get a peek at our opponent's hand, make sure we know what they have in there, and get rid of their combo pieces or cards that are giving them value, such as Lightning Bolt, Path to Exile, or, again, counter spells. We're not aiming to win the game with this card, but rather be a defensive father and not let our opponent's son play Magic the Gathering because it's the devil's game. Moving on, we have Suffer the Past. We're running a single copy of this, and this is giving us some graveyard control. We don't need a ton of it because only some decks are running Snapcaster Mage or the kind of dredge combos or other shenanigans out of their graveyard, but this at least gives us a way to deal with those decks if we ever run up against them, and in the worst case scenario, we can use it to get a bunch of life and just direct damage our opponent to death. And the last two spells we have are three copies of Sign and Blood and two copies of Underworld Connection. Both of these cards are aiming to give us card advantage in exchange for life, Underworld Connections we're generally playing on turn 5, turn 6, because we don't need those card advantage right away. We can generally suppress our opponent with our opening hand for the first 4 or 5 turns easy, and then we can start getting more cards to keep our opponent down and hopefully draw into our win conditions. Sign and Blood, on the other hand, can be used to do 2 damage directly to our opponent's face if we don't need the card advantage. Let's move into creatures. Our creatures really kind of fall into two categories. The first category is creatures that also provide us removal. The prime example would be Gatekeeper of Malakar. We are running four copies of this card. We can easily play this as a 2-2 for two, which is okay, I guess. But its kicker cost is really why we have it in the deck, because we can play it for its kicker cost. We get a 2-2 for two, which is okay. And we get to pay an extra one mana to have our opponent sacrifice a creature, which is 100% value, if you ask me. The next creature that falls into our control package would be Desecration Demon. We have three copies this in our deck. He's probably our single best win condition because he's a 6-6 flyer, but it also allows our opponent to sacrifice creatures to tap him down and make him bigger, which makes him really hard to deal with later in the game. And this card is super painful whenever we run up against burn decks, basically any deck that's playing red, because they generally have to play two cards to get rid of them, which is kind of bananas. Speaking of win conditions, we also have three copies of Vampire Nighthawk. Now this guy is just straight up value in a can. So not only is he a 2-3 for 3, but he's also got evasion, so he's hard to block, has lifelink so we can prolong the game, making our opponent have that much harder of a time dealing with us, and he also has Death Touch, so if he does get blocked, or we feel like we need to block something really big, we will kill whatever is blocked, or blocking him. And the last creature we have is a single copy of Gurmarg Angler. We're only playing a single copy of this in the deck because we generally can get a good discount once, but we generally don't get enough cards in the graveyard to get a discount on it twice. If we were playing a multicolor deck where we have fetch lands or even Evolving Wilds, we would have more stuff in our graveyard, but we just generally don't. We have a few removal spells, and then we're generally just holding onto our control stuff, 
and playing it as we need it rather than just burning our hand off as fast as we can. Moving into lands, we don't have anything too special, only 21 swamps, so playing this pretty vanilla, you could add in some other stuff, but we're obviously not. Time to jump over to our sideboard. We are running an additional one copy of Vile Blight, largely if we run up against token decks, or elves, or some other heavy creature deck, I guess Merfolk would be one of those ones as well. We have two copies of Deathmark, which is pretty self-explanatory, two copies of Lost Legacy, this helps us deal with combo decks, so if we are running against a combo deck, or a deck that's really hard for us to beat, actually, usually burn as well, we can side these in, hopefully get rid of some of the value out of their deck, or just break their combo down. Two copies of Mutilate, this is actually our master removal spell, and it does quite a good job because we're only playing swamps, so generally by the time we're playing this, we're doing a guaranteed minus four, minus four, but usually like minus five, minus five, or minus six, minus six, so it's pretty darn good. Three copies of Ruinous Path, this is the only way we have of dealing with Planeswalkers, so if you are running against a deck that has Planeswalkers, such as Tron, which is going to be getting Karn, or potentially Ugin onto the table, this is what you need to be siding in right away. An additional copy of Suffer the Past, this is again if we're running against a Dredge deck, we really want to put this in because then we can actually take stuff out of the graveyard. And last but not least, four copy of Tormod's Crypt, which also helps us deal with Dredge. That sums up the entire budget mono black control deck, but before we end this video, let's talk about some upgrades. First and foremost, there are definitely better ways of getting card advantage in black, specifically with Dark Confidant or Phyrexian Arena. Both of these allow us to get cards without actually having to tap a land in order to do it, and Dark Confidant comes with the added bonus that he is also a body which we can use to swing into our opponent's face with, and if we don't want to be losing life from Dark Confidant anymore, we can just use one of our removal spells to get rid of him. The next and probably best upgrade for this deck would be Kalidus Trader of Get. So not only is this a fantastic win condition, but it also means generally whenever we play one of our removal spells, we're also going to get a 2-2 zombie, which makes it really, really hard for our opponent to win when we're just growing our board consistently. Then we have Surgical Extraction, which is kind of like Lost Legacy, except it's a little bit better in some ways and a little bit worse than others because we need to get the card into the graveyard in order to remove it from their hand, library, and graveyard. But I would generally say it's better than Lost Legacy because it can be cast for free if we want by paying two life. Now you may have seen this one coming, but Thought Seize is almost a direct upgrade for Duress, but you could actually run four Thought Seize and two Duress in this deck and actually have a really good time, because Duress in this deck is actually really good, but Thought Seize is just generally better. And the last card you could consider putting in this deck is Liliana of the Veil. She is easily the best Planeswalker in Magic, and she makes this deck absolutely crazy. But if you are considering putting her in this deck, you may want to just look at buying a top eight deck, because this card is worth twice as much as this entire deck, so take that into consideration. And that is the end of this deck tech. If you want to vote on the next deck tech, there is a little thing up in the top corner up there. You can vote on which deck is going to be made into the next deck tech and videos to be played afterwards. If you haven't already, please subscribe to Giant Monster Games. Until next time, I'm Adrian, and don't forget to game like a giant monster.